On February the 14th, 2001, residents of Oklahoma City were all preparing to spend some time with their loved ones for Valentine's Day. Instead, they were witness to a terrifying murder of their friendly neighbor, Susan Hamilton, who was found strangled and beaten to death on her bathroom floor. Her husband, Dr. John Hamilton, also had similar plans that night, but ended up on the phone with 911 and claimed to have found his wife that way when he returned home from one of his surgeries. John was known for loving his wife dearly and showering her with expensive gifts and luxury holidays, but this memory of how John was is nowhere near as prominent of how people perceive him today because soon after the death of his wife, the whole world would come to find out that John wasn't the loving and caring husband he was thought out to be. Without any further ado, let's get into the morbid love story of John and Susan Hamilton. It appeared that Dr. John Hamilton and his wife Susan had what some would call the perfect marriage. During their 14 years they spent together, the successful doctor proved to be quite the romantic, fully devoted to his wife Susan and their marriage. A Porsche for his bride on their wedding day was just the beginning of his extravagant gifts. He adored Susan and provided her with a good life filled with expensive presents and luxurious holidays. Dr. Hamilton was a talented obstetrics and gynecologist in Oklahoma City. When he met Susan in 1985, both were divorced and had four children between them. So it wasn't long after they met that John was soon head over heels in love. The couple married just two years later and settled down together into a privileged life. Shortly after their marriage, Susan began working at John's practice which did attract hate in the conservative state that they were living and working in at the time. As well as delivering babies, John was also involved in abortions, which led to protests where John's face was put on a wanted poster and Susan began receiving threatening calls. But in the end, life went on for the pair and nothing ever came of the threatening calls and abuse they received during the protests and they were set to live happily ever after. But 14 years later, no one could have ever predicted this sad ending to what occurred on Valentine's Day in 2001. That morning, like every other morning, John left their house early for surgery. He returned home to exchange cards with Susan before heading back to conduct his second surgery of the day. He had ordered a huge bunch of expensive red orchids from a local florist for his wife, but never ended up collecting them, because before he could, he was dialing 911 and he had just walked into his home to find his beloved wife in the bathroom, laying in a pool of her own blood, deceased. When paramedics arrived, it was a sickening scene. John claimed he had returned home to find this gruesome discovery, she had been strangled with two neckties and beaten to a pulp. The injuries were so severe that parts of her brain were exposed and her face was totally unrecognizable. The murder weapon was never found. John was covered in Susan's blood and was hysterical as he stared down at his wife's lifeless body. What monster could have killed her with such brutality? From the very beginning, there were many indicators that led police to make Dr. Hamilton their number one suspect. There was no forced entry into the home, no items were stolen from the house, and despite the amount of bloodshed, there weren't any blood prints at the scene leading to or from the bathroom of horror. Although Susan had received threats from anti-abortion activists, had she really been killed to punish John? The police didn't think so. John also said that he tried mouth to mouth, but there was none of Susan's blood on his face despite her extreme facial injuries. When investigating the home, police found something of interest, something that indicated things weren't going so smoothly for the perfect couple. 
police found a Valentine's Day card from Susan to John. It's read, I bought this two weeks ago, so I guess it maybe doesn't seem as appropriate, but I do love you. Have a great day, Susan. Could this message have indicated turbulence in the relationship? Her words made police question whether their marriage was as perfect as it seemed. Another clue that the marriage may have begun to sour was when Susan found out that John had been making phone calls to a topless dancer. In fact, there were dozens of calls to this woman on his cell records. Did she catch him having an affair? While John insisted that this was just a patient and he was trying to help, Susan accused him of having an affair. Friends of Susan said and also told authorities that she began to think about asking for a divorce. That she began to think about asking for a divorce. After the horrid discovery, John was taken to a police station. They noticed that during the car journey over there, he was scraping his knuckles on the mesh divider, which could have possibly been an attempt to hide injuries on his hands. I mean, why else would you do that? The timeline was tight and the time to kill between surgeries would have been almost impossible. But when investigators discovered he'd been late to his second operation, he was immediately charged and denied bail. Strangely, John seemed to have plenty of supporters at the time. Even when details about the stripper were revealed, public opinion was that at worst he had stepped over a professional boundary. The community refused to believe Dr. John Hamilton was capable of such a crime. If he had been having an affair, some even suggested that his mistress had killed Susan, which by all accounts seems very unlikely. In the end, at the trial, it all came down to blood evidence. Dr. Hamilton was observed by paramedics covered in his wife's blood. Despite the claim of performing CPR on Susan, there was a lack of blood on his mouth and face. Not having a trace of blood on his face was impossible, given the severity of Susan's injuries to her head and face. An interesting observation that paramedic stated was the chest compressions he was performing on Susan was incorrect. For a doctor of his experience, they found this incredibly strange. Susan's blood and skin were found on John's steering wheel. He claimed that he moved it for the first responders before they arrived at the house, but this created doubts throughout the courtroom. Also, while loved ones were sorting through Susan's clothes, they found some of her jewellery hidden in her underwear. It was totally unlike her. The question is, had John put it there to look as if it had been stolen? Because he was taken away straight away, he would have never had the time to retrieve it and get rid of it. The defence team brought out a blood expert who testified that the blood patterns on John were consistent with him trying to save his wife. Now this is when things get a little bizarre. Tom Bevel, the blood expert, noticed something the authorities and the prosecutor's expert did not. When the expert was asked under oath if there was anything that had been missed, he alerted the court to the splatter inside John's cuff. He said it was likely to have been the result of John forcing a blow to Susan's head. As you could expect, the courtroom fell silent. The defense witness testified against his own client, very well condemning him to prison. It totally turned the case around and he had unwittingly become the prosecution's ultimate weapon. So just to clarify, the blood expert that the defense attorney brought in had been the secret weapon to put John away. Tom Bevel later claimed that he had to tell the truth, despite the fact that it hurt John Hamilton who hired him to try and keep him out of prison. He went on to say, ultimately, you take the oath to tell the truth and that overrides any allegiance I may have with my client. With Tom Bevel's testimony, it took the jury only two hours to find the doctor guilty of first degree murder. Dr. Hamilton was sentenced to life in prison and Tom Bevel turned out to be the silver bullet, a bullet that put a murderous doctor away for life. The majority of jurors were very disappointed that they didn't have the death sentence as an option, the judge later said. You should consider yourself very lucky. John continues to appeal the conviction but has so far been denied a retrial. 
His supporters still believe he's innocent and that he loved his wife too much to hurt her in such a horrid way. But in the end, it wasn't his love for Susan that was in question, it was whether he was responsible for her morbid death. At the time of this video, he currently remains incarcerated at the Dick Connor Correctional Center in Hominy, Oklahoma, and he will likely die in prison. Although this was a very morbid case, there's one question I need to ask. If you were Tom Bevel, what would you have done? Would you have admitted to what you knew, or would you have sat quiet under oath and give your client a chance to get away with murder? That's it for part 3 of our Valentine's Day special series, I really hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see more romance related true crime videos, please let me know in the comments down below and subscribe to the channel because there's always something new to see here every day, so hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.